Imagine for a moment a world where the hybrid style took off long before the thrilling 30 and third party Legends masterpiece scene ever came into fruition. The landscape would have been very different, we may have even gotten die cast in several Legends figures if hybrid style had truly taken off. So the question is, why didn't it? The hybrid style line was envisioned to bring larger characters down to a smaller scale, pretty much what the Thrilling 30 Legends line did and what the Legion lines did before it and what third party masterpiece does today, but it was very short lived. It consisted of Optimus and Optimus. That was it, it never expanded to other characters. So why didn't it take off, despite the fact that third party legends are very prominent today, to the point where they've almost overtaken third party masterpiece? Well, greetings Cybertronians, I'm Dr. Lockdown, and to answer that question, today's diagnosis pertains to hybrid style Black Convoy. Okay, so before I start, I just want to clarify that unfortunately the copy I have isn't complete. It's mostly complete, but it's missing some of the weapons, roller, and his garden hose, which is perfectly understandable given the New South Wales water restrictions, considering the country's on fucking fire right now! And his stand. Whose fault is this? Mine and mine alone. I lost them. This is actually pretty common for me. For example, I left the gun for Siege Crosshairs at work and never saw it again. I'm well aware that this is highly unprofessional, but let's be honest, this channel is so shit house that I doubt all 700 of you care about my professionalism. Regardless, if you've ever had a G1-inspired Optimus Prime, you probably know what the trailer does. Pegs in at the back, stands free, flips up, has the drone fold out at the back, blah de blah blah Now, credit where credit is due, they've actually gone and provided some extra little features, such as a spring-loaded ramp and some automorph on the opening section. The latter doesn't work as well as I'd hoped, but the fact that they went to the extra trouble shows that this line wasn't meant to be a throwaway one. Yes, it may have only lasted two figures before cancellation, but there was genuine hard work and effort put into it. Unfortunately, the end result for the meat and potatoes is f King atrocious! Housekeeping out of the way first, you may be curious why this version is black and gold as opposed to black and teal. Well, that's because this is the Asia exclusive version, which claims to have gold paint apps. Plot twists aside from a few here and there, it's not gold, it's just mustard plastic. And it looks f***ing terrible. Second, yes, he's an Autobot. I don't know why he's an Autobot, especially considering Armada came out one year prior, but whatever. Third, it's not mistransformed. This truck mode genuinely looks this bad. I mean, we've dealt with underpainted alt modes, alt modes that lack solidity, issues with kibble, and a multitude of other stuff at the legend scale and in other lines. But everything in this alternate mode isn't just categorically wrong, it's infuriatingly wrong. The design is what sticks out the most, with absolutely no regard for kibble whatsoever. If I'm being honest, it makes the alt modes from the Titanium line look infinitely better. Hell, it even makes the Robot Masters Optimus Prime look like sheer pornography. The legs have gone through absolutely no transformation aside from the wheels slipping out, and yes, despite being made of literally Prime's legs, they feel entirely unfinished. This is literally the easiest part of any Optimus Prime alike to get right, and considering they've already engineered a waste swivel in there, there was no reason to make these look messier than they needed to be. The thighs for some reason don't collapse in all the way, and you're left with the effect of a kid tucking in their arms and going down on their legs. There was legitimately no reason to make these as ugly as they were, especially considering the G1 version even looks better than this. Not only is the waist section on full display, but the way it's designed makes the truck tilt downwards at the back, so the profiling is all whack. Not like there's anything to tab in anyway, so the result is that it just flops around. Or, or at least it would, if the one ball joint keeping everything in place wasn't as loose as the timing in a drunk free jazz session. Oh, and you wanna peg it back on? Nah, that sh don't work. You gotta untransform the entire way section, and then peg it back in. All thanks to this super sliding rail that they've incorporated into the transformation. Not sure if I've mentioned this, although I'm pretty sure I have at some point, but sliding rails are my least favourite type of element in designing a transformation. They often limit articulation, rarely tab in properly without a serious locking mechanism, which most of the time they don't have, and they are the most likely to break down over time, which I'll get to! Granted, in this position there's not so much stress placed on the mechanism, in this particular part, I'll admit, but it also feels pretty awful to mess with. And oh boy, if you thought the back section was bad, then, uh, the front section, it's also bad. Probably worse, the profiling on this truck is all wrong, with clear kibble lines all over it and bonkers proportions. These weird ridges break the cohesion more so than any form of kibble I've ever seen on an alt mode. They've tried to replicate the grey stripe on the side here, but the transformation makes it look like someone's roughly cut the section out with a blunt knife. That cutout situation continued on the front of the cab, with it looking even worse. The arms look god awful from the sides here. Not only are they too bulky, but it ends up being far wider than the actual window section. Speaking of which, the windows somehow seem too flat for the design. I don't know how you make a f 
fucking window too flat, but hey, here we are. This is a thing that exists now. This is elevated by the fact that the chrome grill doesn't tab in anywhere, so it wobbles around. Also, my copy is misassembled. Thanks, Hasbro! The final nail in the coffin would have to be the wheels. For some fucking reason, they're not just too small, they're smaller than the back wheels. How do you f*** that up? How do you make a design this f***? terrible in one of the easiest modes to pull off. And yes, some people will tell me it's virtually impossible to get an alt mode done on a figure this complicated at this scale. And oh, nah, no one's actually telling me that because no one actually likes this figure. But if they were, therein lies the problem. The design is far too f***ing complicated for the engineering available at the time. And considering it's just a Optimus Prime, it doesn't need to be. They should have just done what they did with the Spy Changer years earlier, but with extra ball joints. It's not that he's an overly complex design, it's that they've used the complexity as an excuse to cover up their horrible design work. And none of that's even scratching the surface. The ties are rubber for no reason, so they keep falling off. The roof has a butt-ugly mustard section in the middle. The headlights aren't properly painted, so the transparent red bleeds through the sides. The wheels don't tab in properly in every single situation. And the list goes on. Without a doubt, this is the absolute worst mode I have reviewed on this channel. It is so bad that not even the addition of a trailer makes it any better. For an Optimus Prime, that is unheard of. The only thing I have to say is shame on you, Takara. Shame on you. Now, for a size comparison, he's actually a little bit smaller than most average Legends figures. If you're looking for a scaled collection, he might fit at that size, but... Let's be honest, there's much better Optimi on the market. So the transformation is by far the absolute worst transformation I've ever captured on camera. Now, granted, I have Transformers that transform far worse than this guy, and I have much more infuriating and annoying, frustrating transformations, such as Alien Attack Farage, but that, I haven't done a review on him, so this, for the most part, is the worst on the entire channel. Not because it's complex, but because it's just... Bullshit. Completely bullshit in every single way. Many people have told me this is a very similar transformation to the MP01, but that's completely false. Every video I've seen of the MP01 looks nothing like this, so it's really just pulled out of the designer's ass. This is going to be really difficult on camera, but the first thing you want to do is deal with the legs by pulling these out, rotating the wheels around like so. And hoping to dear god the feet pop out because sometimes they just get stuck in there. Now these two arms are actually supposed to peg into these two side bits there. But it just got so difficult that I gave up and didn't bother with it. And for review purposes I don't want this to take five years to film so I left them untabbed. But they are supposed to tab in. But basically you just pull an Optimus by pulling the arms out. Then you open up the chest section. Rotate the grill around. You have to rotate it around first and then fold it in with this bit. For some reason you can't fold it in first because you think that would make it easier, but it doesn't work. But anyway, then you can collapse up the windows. Hooray! The wheels fold into the torso on these very tiny pieces that I'm afraid will break as soon as I'm done filming. Or during filming, I'm not sure. This is very weakly put together. And if you think that's weak, these entirely weak pieces of plastic fold out on these entirely tiny little struts that are very fragile. Oh, whippy! Rotate on this tiny fragile hinge. Rotate these backwards into place. They don't tab in, they just sit there. But then you can collapse the entire section down there, which will bring those out of place. So you have to rearrange them. Oh, joy. The arms extend out. And instead of doing a really cool flip, just that folds into place. That is pathetic. And you'd think the head is simple to pull out, but it gets stuck a lot of the time. So first thing you want to do is pull this up, and then try to get the head out of there. That was lucky, but even then, you heard an uncomfortable click as the ball joint snapped into place. Oh joy. Then you collapse that, fold this tiny little panel back, and you have your black convoy in his ugly robot mode. Oh, that's not very good for a transformation. Now admittedly, the robot mode is slightly better than the vehicle mode. There's actually proper decisions being made here from the design standpoint. But it's still f***ing garbage! Looks wise, it's barely possible. The Optimus Prime design actually gets carried across to a basic degree. You can tell who or what he is supposed to be. But that doesn't mean he's not riddled with a bunch of issues. Head sculpt. But ugly. Can't put my finger on why, but for some reason it just doesn't work. Forearm kibble. Janky. When the Legion figures from other lines have less kibble than you, you know something went wrong here. Hollow legs. Yes, hollowness is fine from the back, but from the front? What the f***? How is this okay? 
Also, die cast on a Legends figure. Do you know why figures use die cast to begin with? It's to shift weight from certain elements of the figure to help it stand better. This is a Legends figure, it shouldn't require die cast. If I'll give the designers anything, it's that it does stand quite well, so the inclusion of die cast is baffling since I didn't need it to begin with. Also, remember how I said I hated sliding rails? Well, this is the reason why. I haven't played with this figure since a few weeks after I bought it, it's been sitting on my shelf for almost a whole year, and already one of the sliding legs is broken. It makes me so angry that I'm vindicated in this situation, because it means this toy is barely functioning in even a basic stance, and I haven't even done anything! And when a toy like this costs this f***ing much, and yet is this goddamn tiny, then they need to get their priorities in order. Although, thanks to the cancellation of the line, I presume those priorities weren't here to begin with. This also seems to be channeling elements of Energon Fatimus Prime, although to be fair, it's not as extreme as that example. It does look solid, but once you notice that there aren't actually any tabs keeping the blaster thing together, you realise it's not. But at least they included a matrix, a malformed, poorly painted matrix. Yeah, that's not paint chipping, I've never actually taken it out of its cavity. It just came like that. Below the torso, the waist section is comically oversized, making it look like a big grey diaper. That makes the smeared gold paint look like baby sh**. No, seriously, the paint's so poorly done it looks like feces. Now, I will admit, the back section does clean up exceptionally well, but the arms certainly f***ing don't. Why do these function the way they do? Why is the kibble so far back? Why are they far too thin for the body? Why do the smokestacks turn into guns? Why do the canisters also turn into guns? Why is this figure so sh**? Yeah, this figure is bad. Real bad, there's no getting around it. Even the paint is underwhelming. None of it makes a statement, and it's frequently messy and under or over applied. If I had to think of one positive, one stinking positive, it's the way they handled the jetpack. This actually looks pretty cool, but if I'm being honest, you can get this effect on a much better toy from around the same time anyway. Cybertron Optimus Prime. Same deal, same gimmick, better execution on overall toy. For the longest time, people would cling to this f***ing thing in the hopes that it would fit as an Optimus Prime for a modern Legends collector, but it never did. The Thrilling 31 was always better. In this day and age, with so many other options on the market, there's virtually no reason to buy it. I mean, yes, it is an official figure from Takara, but third-party Legends collecting doesn't really rely on Takara to begin with. Although I will admit, for the time, it actually has some really good articulation. The head is on a ball joint, as are his shoulders, which actually have an extra hinge outwards. They can hinge backwards a bit too. He has a bicep swivel, a 90 degree elbow, and a wrist swivel. He also came with alternate hands, but they fell off too easily, so of course I lost them. He has a ball joint at the hip, and thanks to the transformation rail, you can fake an ab crunch. It is small, but it is there. Magic Square did it better though. His hip skirts are on ball joints, which allow for an extra motion on these universal hips. Sadly, he doesn't get much outwards though. Finally, he actually has a thigh swivel, and a pretty nice double jointed knee, an ankle tilt, and a foot pivot. So in all, the only things I can really say positively about this figure pertain to the articulation and the jetpack. Everything else can f*** off! Size-wise, is a standard Legends figure. And what a f***ing disgrace to the size class he is. You disgust me. You disgust me. Honestly, the proof is in the pudding. All the reasons why the hybrid style never truly took off are right here. The alt mode has no cohesion, the transformation is a fiddly mess, the use of diecast is baffling on such a small scale, the robot mode's proportions are too wonky to justify the complex transformation, the articulation is a bit dinky, parts keep falling off, it all goes to show, this is not a good figure, and because it's not a good figure, it most likely didn't sell well, and because it most likely didn't sell well, well, no one bought it, and such, as such the line died. I also think it was a little too expensive. I don't know how much it actually was, this very copy here, because it was a birthday present alongside New Age Gold Bug, which I have right here, and I've also done a review on it earlier. But I imagine at the least it would have cost 120 considering what it comes with. And it's not worth that price. That being said, at least it's better than the aftermarket prices of Galaxy Convoy, which is the other figure that came in the line. I am still eager to hunt that down, though, in spite of its price, just to see if it truly almost saved the line. Because that figure does look really, really good, and the source material it's based on is pretty solid, so who knows? Maybe it'll be better than Black Convoy over here. I know it's bloody expensive, but hey, I guess that's my grail then. I'll keep looking, though, until I find a good price, and then I'll jump on that. And I hope to see you back here when I do. And until then, thanks for watching this year's Legendary Transformers Marathon. I realise this year was a bit more erratic. I've tried to keep it a bit more streamlined, but I think as a result, things just went all over the place. Hopefully this series will return next year, but for now, I think I need to do something with all of that junk.
There we go. I hope you've all enjoyed the Legendary Transformers Marathon. I'm very happy to have brought it to the screens of YouTube for a second year in a row. And will I do a third year? Well, hell yeah, I will. I feel that there's a lot to be discovered in the small-scale lineup, both with official and unofficial toys, and I want to get through all of them, eventually. Little bit by little bit. And hopefully this series will eventually bring it to your screens again next Christmas. But until then... <coughs> wow, it, it's been a long day of filming, and I think I need a break. See you guys next year, or maybe before then. I don't know what I'll do. I'll see you then.